He's the leader of the pack, at least the Senate pack. Senator Jonathan Dismang returns to the program. Thanks, as always, for being here. Yeah. Appreciate, no, appreciate you. appreciate it. All right. So you heard Jenny Blankenship talking in the previous uh, segment there about pre-K funding, $3 million. Y'all going to do more than $3 million? I, I think that's to be seen right now, but I do appreciate kind of your uh, comments in the beginning, especially about how this has become a little bit of a partisan issue. I think everyone wants pro, you know quality pre-K programs here in the state. That's not an R or D issue. I think the discussion right now is what, what level of funding do we need to make sure that we have that quality and we have the proper amount of access here in the state? So to be determined is what you're telling me. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. She'll probably live with that, for now at least. You'll get squeezed a lot harder in the session. All right, medical marijuana, let's talk about this. Uh, you said this week, it's not my goal to put my thumbprint on this. <laughs> Maybe some other fingerprints, but not your thumbprint. What is the biggest mission for the commission to you? Is it to get this thing implemented as quickly as possible? Is it to set up a process where there's fairness for the growers and the, the dispensaries and how that's going to work, or is it something else? Yeah, I think it's to have a fair and transparent process. Um, and again, I think it's more to make sure that the uh, that the prescriptions are being made properly. I think that they have a, a significant role uh, to play in, in doing that. And um, and again, there's a lot of unknowns. I mean, I hate to keep saying that about medical marijuana, but it's new to all of us here in Arkansas, and it's going to be a new it's process. New to some and, of us here in Arkansas. <laughs> fair enough. Fair all enough. Right. The legal use through medical means is a is new to uh, a number of folks here in the state, and and again, it's going to take a little while for people to get their their arms wrapped around the issue, and, and so it's not, I don't think, doing it quickly. Now, I, I don't mind working on a quick timeline as long as we're doing it correctly, mm -hmm. uh, but but I wanted them to definitely take their time, do things the right way. All right, My, the governor got. Um his waiver on Arkansas works this past week. Not everything that he wanted, but almost everything that right. he wanted. We got a new administration coming in in January. Do you think that there will be an opportunity to revisit those waivers in the new administration? What would you pursue? Yeah, I think right now here in the state, uh, you know, because of that election, uh, we're at a pretty exciting, you know, uh, cross point. I mean, it's. It, uh, we're going to be able to push forward, I think, some of the uh, uh, more dynamic changes in the health care system. I think you'll see us revisit the uh, health savings accounts and those types of coverages uh, for, for folks when, you know, under the Obama administration, you couldn't do things to make that feasible. Uh, and again, I, it's really going to be unseen. I mean, or we really don't know uh, what the Trump administration wants health care to look like. Uh, but I think we're poised here in the state because of the fact that we use premium process assistance model uh, with insurance uh, to really uh, be a leader and, uh, and have a lot of input on that national stage. Have you been getting some phone calls from anybody else out of the state recently not, since not the election? outside the state. Just so, in state? Right, just in state. All right. Uh, another question, I guess, on health care, another big issue that you guys are going to grapple with in this uh, legislative session is kind of where the payment uh, improvement initiative is. Where, where does that stand at this point in time? Um, as far as the payment improvement initiative, um, I, I still think we're working through that process, and, and I'm not sure where, where that's going to lead at this point. Um, I think you it's something that's... More services coming under that in this next session? I mean, I, I think I, I think it's to be seen, to be honest. It's probably too, early, too, too, too early on at this, this point. It's becoming a common theme right, for you here. I, I agree. Well, I mean, <laughs> and, and to kind of revisit that, I think we are heading into a session of a lot of great unknowns. Yeah. Those great unknowns because of, uh, you know, measures passed by the people and then also the changes in Washington. And I think we're going to, probably more so than any session I've ever been involved in, we're going to have to be making some decisions on the fly based on the outcomes from uh, from the federal level and then also of the knowledge that we're able to build here on these issues in the state. Is this going to be the longest session you've ever been a part of? That that definitely is not my goal. Uh, <laughs> again, we want to work efficiently possible. and make, make good, smart but it's decisions. Possible. Uh, You're telling I'd me it's, it's possible, possible but right. uh, uh, I don't want it to be likely. Headline, Senate President says potential longest session ever uh, in the works. All right, got to take a quick commercial break and come back and talk about some more things on the uh, session agenda here with Senator Jonathan Dismang. We're back right after this. Welcome back. We are with Senate President Jonathan Dismick. We're talking about things that are going to be on the horizon here with the session. We're, uh, gosh, a month away, really. Right. It's Just coming up quick. A little, a little over that. All right. Uh, we were talking about uh, some different things in healthcare and human services before the break. 
Let's talk about foster care. Um, this has been a big topic in the interim. I had Cindy Gillespie on the program uh, a week ago talking about some of the things that are being implemented there. It's a serious, serious situation. Right. I mean, very fragile lives at stake. What, what, what's the biggest thing you guys can do in this next session? Do you think that's going to make a difference? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of things happening right now. You, you have some legislation being filed by members that have been very engaged in that process, Senator Clark and others. And I think there's some meaningful re reform in, in what they're wanting to do. Of course, we need to make sure we don't push something too far. Uh, but again, I think you'll see some legislative reforms in place. But you have to be very proud of the leadership role the governor has taken and, and then Dire Director Gillespie on foster care and the crisis that we're having in the state. And one of the biggest things that I think we're going to be able to do is that revamping of the state pay plan. Mm -hmm. A big component of that is are, are these DHS workers and the fact that we're not paying a salary or a wage right now that recruits the type of people we need in those positions. That leads to high turnover and a lot of kids getting left kind of on the in-between because of that. And so I think when we're looking at that, making sure that we have good people working those cases uh, is, is the most significant step that we're going to be able to take. Walk me through the pay structure and theory what you hope will be accomplished. Are, right. you, are you going to give raises to existing employees? Are you going to restructure the whole system of how right. uh, employee pay is based? No, okay. It's, it, the state pay plan, again, it's, it's much more broad than that. And, and it's really taking a look at the market and make sure that we're paying, paying market rates and, and allowing people to elevate inside their position without having to transfer out mm -hmm. to do something else uh, because of their skill set increasing. Uh, specifically in DHS, um, and again, I don't, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but there's substantial pay increases for those caseworkers. And again, the main thing you want to do is make sure that those kids have, you know, some continu or the, you know, continuous stream of help from the same type of individuals or the same individuals. Being able to retain those folks uh, at a wage, again, that, that, that keeps them in place is, is going to be critical. Uh, let's talk about another big uh, thing that will be coming up here, and that is you guys want to do tax cuts. All this stuff you're talking about costs money. Exactly. Tax cuts, $50 million. Your friend Senator Bart Hester wants to go over $100 right. million in tax cuts. How big do you think tax cuts will be? Uh, I think right now we have the governor's proposed budget, which is very tight. Uh, it allows for a $50 million tax cut that actually has a $25 million hit in the first year. If you look at his budget, the, prior, the way he's prioritized the spending, I think we're limited pretty well to that $50 million tax cut. Uh, it's to be determined. There's a lot of talk right now of where that tax cut should occur, whether it be with veterans, whether it be purely on the income tax, and then if it is on the income tax, what brackets are most impacted. Uh, but right now, unless there are additional spending cuts or a, a significant change in forecast, you know, the cut level should remain about that $50 million mark. Do you think that with, uh, um, with the underperformance we're seeing in the sales tax revenue right now in particular, you still think $50 million is going to be possible? You, at, at this point, that's, what, uh, that's we, what I would say. If that scenario turns a little bit further south, are you going to be willing to stand up and say no tax cuts? Are you going to say let's go in the budget and let's make more cuts to expenses in order to get that tax cut level? It may be a little bit of both um, as far as how we would proceed there. I would hope that we're already taking a look and cutting the places that need to be cut or that should be cut. And, and so that $50 million mark that we're setting out right now should be a fairly firm number. Uh, again, now there may be places of efficiencies that we can create and that legislators can identify, uh, but no one knows better than the governor about his own budget and his agencies and, and where those cuts and, and, and trimming should take place. And with what we have right now, I'd say $50 million is, is the mark. You guys always take his budget, any governor's budget, and go play with it anyway. So, And then the governor has to come back and say, all right, I'll do what you guys want because you got me over a barrel, and I have to do it. So. Right. That's well, how the process works. Right. Well, and that's how, how it should work to some degree. <laughs> so. All right. We've got about a minute left. Uh, you recently said that you were going to advocate for just two constitutional mm -hmm. amendment proposals, one from the House, one from the Senate. You had said you want to see some cleanup of the amendment process. Another idea is, first of all, you still... Is that still your thought? Yeah, and we've that? already, did, we're halfway down that road as sure. far as limiting, eliminating to the two. Now, with the third one being an option with a two-third vote, uh, whenever the, uh, the Senate came in to select committees and seniority and set seniority, we actually adopted that rule change. Uh, and so, like I said, we're halfway there. That'll have to be, it's a joint rule, would need to be adopted by the House, but uh, we're making progress. What would, what would be, uh, what's your thought on doing away with fiscal sessions? That's been floated out there. Well, I mean, I, 
there's some value both ways in having the sessions. It allows us to have a, a, a shorter period to have to forecast and, and allows for a little bit greater certainty in the budgeting process. At the same time, uh, it puts the members here on a annual basis and, and it's a lot of strain to members that want to serve. So how are you going to vote when that one comes across your desk? I'd like to see the bill first. <laughs> Senator Jonathan Dismang. You're a good tap dancer, aren't you? I, I do my best. You're good. All right. Thank you for being here. I appreciate all you. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you for watching. That is all for today's Talk Business and Politics. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time.